today we are going to talk about that how carbon, di carbon dioxide which is produced in the tissues, how it is transported from the peripheral tissue to the lungs so that it can be expelled out of the body. Let's suppose here we have drawn few cells, this these cells represent the peripheral tissue, right? And during the metabolic processes, there is release of carbon dioxide. Which metabolic processes release carbon dioxide? Classically, carbon dioxide is released in aerobic respiration, right? When you break down the glucose or you break down the fatty acids with the help of oxygen, is that right? You produce water and carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is a waste product. It must go out of the body. Now, your peripheral tissues are constantly producing carbon dioxide, so it means partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the cells where carbon dioxide is produced is high. Because partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high, suppose in the cell, naturally from partial pressure, high partial pressure will drive it to low pressure. Low pressures. So from the cells, carbon dioxide comes to interstitial fluid. Is that right? How carbon dioxide is transported from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell? Who will answer? Francisco. How the carbon dioxide is transported from the cell, from interior of the cell where it is produced to the interstitial fluid. Yes, please. A simple diffusion. Carbon dioxide is lipid soluble. There's no special transporting mechanisms required because carbon dioxide is a lipid soluble gas. Do you think carbon dioxide is more soluble or oxygen is more soluble? Carbon dioxide is more soluble. Carbon dioxide is about 25 or 27 times more soluble as compared to oxygen. Anyway, even though carbon dioxide is being produced in the cells continuously, but it is highly soluble in the lipid, so it dissolves into cell membranes and through the simple diffusion process, it comes into interstitial fluid and there again it is present in dissolved form. And dissolved carbon dioxide from the interstitial fluid, for, right, is shifting or diffusing into capillary fluid. Is that right? Now, once carbon dioxide comes into the capillary fluid, then what really happens to it? That is the question. The how it is transported back to the lungs, right? Remember, carbon dioxide, even though it is more soluble than oxygen, but all of the carbon dioxide cannot be dissolved into plasma fluid. Why? Because if all the carbon dioxide which is produced in our body every minute if you want all carbon dioxide to be dissolved and to be transported into dissolved form, we need very high pressures. And they are not present in human body. Is that right? Again, let me tell you. Carbon dioxide is produced in big amount in the body. How much carbon dioxide is produced every minute? How much carbon dioxide is produced in a resting human being every minute approximately? Approximately every minute you produce 200 ml of carbon dioxide. You know this thing that in a resting human being, how much oxygen is delivered to the peripheral tissue every minute? 250, right? Listen, this is a very interesting concept now. Uh, every minute, oxygen which is delivered from the lungs to the body tissue is 250 ml, uh, right? Total oxygen from the lungs going to the tissues is 250 ml. And every minute, the carbon dioxide which is produced is about 200 ml. Now, uh, why oxygen is supplied more and carbon dioxide produced is less? L let me tell you. The oxygen which is going to tissue is 250 ml per minute. This is the oxygen going to the tissues. Is that right? And from the tissues, carbon dioxide which is coming out every minute of course, we are considering a resting person, healthy, normal resting person, that is 200 ml per minute. Of course, this oxygen is appearing here, if there is aerobic respiration. Why more oxygen is going and why less carbon dioxide is produced, someone with very good brains will answer. I think question goes to that lady. Okay, my question is that right now my lungs are providing my body every minute 250 ml of oxygen 
and every minute they are bringing out, bringing out 200 ml of carbon dioxide. Question is that this oxygen <laughs> is appearing here as a part of carbon dioxide. Now question is this, why more oxygen is delivered and why less carbon dioxide is produced? Anyone? Please. There is a topic called biochemistry. It's a very basic of metabolism. Please tell me. When we break down the glucose with oxygen, some oxygen goes as carbon dioxide and remaining oxygen goes with water, my friends. It's so simple. You heard of things like that? You know, we say that glucose, what is that? C6, H12, O6. We add oxygen and you get a lot of, of course, energy. ADP convert into ATP and through many, many steps, eventually you end up with a lot of carbon dioxide and water. Is that right? So all the oxygen which is going from out, some of it is utilized in other pathway also. Maybe that is becoming part of water. That was a very simple answer. That is why we get more oxygen and produce less carbon dioxide because we are producing water also. Am I clear? And production of water requires oxygen. Claro? Okay, let's come back. Now carbon dioxide is coming to the blood. I said carbon dioxide, if you want to transport all the carbon dioxide which is produced during every minute in the dissolved form, then you have to have a very high pressure to keep this carbon dioxide dissolved and bring back here. But partial pressures of carbon dioxide are not so high. What is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood? Do you think arterial blood has carbon dioxide? Yes. It has carbon dioxide? Yes, it does have. So what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood? Who will tell me? Yes, please. That is 40, yes, millimeter of mercury. And what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in vein? 46 millimeter of mercury. Or at least remember, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the veins, of course, will be more than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial side. So first thing which you have to remember is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide on the arterial side is 40 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide on venous side is 46 millimeter of mercury. Is that right? Now the next concept is that normally how much carbon dioxide content is present in 100 ml of arterial blood. Of course, everyone knows that in arterial blood, total amount of carbon dioxide will be less. And on venous blood, uh, total amount of carbon dioxide will be more. Now, as you are becoming doctors, you know, you will be uh, studying patients' arterial blood gases, right, and a lot of other studies. So, what is the amount of carbon dioxide present in arterial blood, 100 ml arterial blood, in a normal person? What do you think? Anyone? Amount of carbon dioxide which is present in 100 ml of the blood, write it down. What is that? Carbon dioxide volumes is equal to, yes, who will tell me? 48 milliliter per 100 ml dl, deciliter. One deciliter is 100 ml. Right? Of course. Why I'm writing them in comparison so that you don't confuse them. Many students confuse the pressures with the volume, then volumes with the pressure. You have to remember they are different things. Here pressure is, carbon dioxide pressure is 40. And here it is raised and it becomes 46. And on arterial side, the content of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of the blood is 48 ml per dia. And carbon dioxide content now, on venous side will be of course more than arterial side. How much it is? 